After making these wood mandalas, I wanted to try one with a lot of layers using paper, so today we're going to be making a 10 layer paper mandala. I started by using Midjourney AI to come up with some concept images. Here's some of the concepts that came out. I decided to create a mandala pattern based on this image. To design this project, I used a software called Rhinoceros and started by drawing a circle with an 8.5 inch diameter. Snapping lines to the center of the circle, I drew quadrants that will be our guide for all of the symmetrical parts of the mandala. You'll see how this comes together later. Now, we can start developing the pattern by using the image as a reference. I take my time trying to figure out shapes that closely resemble what Midjourney created and go step by step to work my way towards the center of the circle. When I'm done with the pattern in this quadrant, I select all of the lines and add them to a block. This lets us modify the pattern and save it, which will also update every other copy of this block instance. You'll see how this works later. We can use the radius array command and create copies of this block around the entire circle. That gives us the first layer of this project. I copy the layer over to a new area and delete all the blocks except for one. I select the block, explode it, and create a new block for the next layer. Using the offset command, I adjust every shape inwards to shrink the cutout by a 64th of an inch. Once I'm done, I complete the block and use the radius array command to duplicate it around the circle. For this project, I decided to have 10 layers. When they were designed, I used the extrude command to create 3D shapes of each layer. Then, I moved them over one another to create a 3D model that I can review. I like the way this project is looking, but I'm a little worried that the layers are so close together that it'll be hard to see the depth. But I decided to try the project anyway. Using a glossy white piece of chipboard, I start the process of laser cutting each layer. I went through about 3 trial cuts to figure out the correct settings that would cut through the thin chipboard material without leaving dark and burned edges all around. Each board took about 15 minutes to laser cut 2 layers, so it took about an hour and a half to cut every piece. When you cut a thin paper material for a project like this one, it's important to keep an eye on the laser cutter because it can set the material on fire really quickly. I didn't see any issues with my cuts, but keep that in mind for some of your projects. Once the layers were cut, I brought them over to my work table and brought over my Maxi Cure Super Glue. I slowly applied the glue to the bottom layer around the perimeter, center, and throughout the patterns. I brought over the layer above, aligned it with the layer with glue, and pressed it into place. Then I applied glue to the next layer in similar places as the previous one, brought over the next layer, and pressed it into place. At first, I didn't see each layer creating the effect that I thought it would. They were so close to each other that it just seemed like it was making the project really thick. But after I reached the fourth layer, I started seeing the subtle depth that was created by the offsets. Once I reached the tenth and last layer, this is how the Paper Mandala project came out. I love the subtle depth that's created by the minimal adjustments of every layer. In the future, I would offset every layer by twice the amount that I did in this one to create a dynamic layered effect like my previous projects. If you enjoyed this project, check out my other laser craft videos and consider subscribing. I'll see you again next week.